Hello, everybody, and welcome to Season 8 of Crypto Sapiens. I am here with my good friend Kush from Samadai, and I'm so excited today to tell you about their DAO tool and how they're helping communities scale and grow. So without further ado, let's dive right in. I want to give Kush a chance to introduce himself, who he is, and what first got him passionate about Web3 and DAOs. So take it away, Kush. I'm Kush. My full name is Kush Agra. I'm, I come from back India, and I'm currently based in Dubai. So I'm the co-founder of this tool called Samudai, and uh, my journey in Web3 started back in 2019. So that's when I got interested in the space. I started learning about Bitcoin, and it was uh, an intersection of technology, economics, finance, and it really struck me. So that's when I started learning more about it. I interned with a company. I worked with them. I built out wallets, uh, decentralized exchange aggregators, and uh, you know a lot more tooling with them. And apart from that, I was working on a side project where I was trying to build out this decentralized YouTube kind of thing. Uh, on top of IPFS. So that was fun. And yeah, since then I've gotten uh, into the crypto rabbit hole. I took part, part in ETH India, won a bounty over there, uh, built a creator economy project, took that to uh, Hack Harvard, Yale, won a few uh, uh, like prizes over there. And after that, I got more involved in the space, started working with the Defolio guys, uh, and also uh, got in touch with James from Collabland. So with him, uh, I basically worked nice. on a retroactive rewards tool for DAOs. So uh, the only idea was to in, like incentivize social contribution for people who are spending their time on Discord, creating meaningful engagement for the community and incentivize them for the time and effort that they're putting in. So that's something that we uh, launched at ETH Denver last year. And awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love yeah, the, and... the buffer corn picture on your website. Love, love the ETH Denver vibes. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually that's actually from that in uh, Eat Denver itself. And uh, during all this, I was also working on Samudai. So uh, Samudai actually started out as a creator economy platform where we were, you know, trying to build out token distribution models and incentivize, uh, you know, the token holders by creating some kind of value for them. And in the process, I was speaking with a lot of uh, people who were forming creator DAOs, and that's when I got interested in DAOs. So I was also a part of Gitcoin kernel back then. And that's when I started getting more interested in DAOs. And, you know, as I learned the value proposition around them, basically the promise that they offer, the feeling of ownership that you get in a community like that, where you have, you can contribute, you know, permissionlessly, it just really struck to me. And now when, I'm, when I've been interviewing uh, a lot of people for, let's say, for joining our team, and that's actually a very recurring theme that comes along, where people are actually looking for... Uh, especially younger generation, uh, you know, who is now starting out their work and looking for more opportunities. They are actively looking out for projects where they can get full ownership on what they can do and get some kind of leadership on, you know, things that they can work on. So they want to take a thing and call it their own and see it end to end. And that's where, that's where DAOs come in and they, they are perfect for this. So that's how, that's what got me really excited about it. And yeah, as I got more into it, more involved with it, uh, started learning about, you know, different problems that the ecosystem is facing. And that's when I decided to build Samudai along with my co-founder, Naveen. So we're both actually from the same college and uh, we've known each other for like almost five years now. So yeah, uh, that was fun. Nice. Awesome. I, I really love two things that you focused on for DAOs. And it's two of the reasons I really love DAOs. It's the ownership piece and the human side of it. Right. So at Samadai, yeah. it sounds like you really became passionate about the human side of DAOs and the community side of it. Um, and I've always seen DAOs as a way to empower and uplift the individual to give them more ownership of their work for someone to show up and feel uh, a bigger sense of fulfillment. Right. And actually feeling aligned with the organization goals and like being able to show up and work from where you want with who you want as much as you'd like and as a, on as many projects as you like. So that's one of the things I really love yeah. about DAOs. And I think DAO tooling is, is so significant when it comes to scaling these organizations and helping these people to work more efficiently. Um, so I love that. Uh, the organization, compensation, ownership, I think those are really important pieces of DAOs. Now, in your own words, Kush, I'd really love for you to tell our audience today what Samadai is, what Samadai means, and what problems are you trying to solve? Samudai is actually a Hindi word, and it means a community. So what happened with it was like, I remember like it was, I think, uh, back last to last year when I was sitting back at my home due to, due to COVID, I was just working on some stuff. I was scrolling through my phone and I was just lying on the ground and I was scrolling and I was looking for some other word for community in different languages. So, you know, some Spanish words were coming up, some Italian words are coming up. And then Samudai came up and I was like, whoa, this looks 
you know familiar and then i was like oh okay this is hindi it sounds well it conveys what we're trying to do and yeah so that's how you know we stuck with samudai as the name and uh, you know coming to the problems that we're trying to solve we're actually trying to target a quite a big horizon of problems when it comes to say now uh, you can like break it down into two parts first of all so coming to the problems which are which you know a single dao is facing which can be uh, called as visibility and participation where let's say they have a lot of contributors but they are not able to you know showcase what they're trying to do properly and have them you know participate in the governance and the bounty or let's say the daily workings of the dao so that's one part of it that comes out the operational piece and the second is the discoverability part of it where we're actually trying to uplift the dao space uh, by giving them more discoverability and earning opportunities which is a very major piece of why a lot of daos are like now uh, you know crumbling because of not because they do not have a sustainable revenue model so we actually want to try to like bring them bring a piece uh, of stability over there as well so these are the two things that we're like trying to achieve uh, you know most actively but then when you you know get into more granular thing it comes down to you know project management organizing contributors and onboarding them and like finding more projects that they can contribute to actively and vice versa for the dao admins like finding more contributors uh, who will stay with them and contribute properly then i mean when you get into this like reputation also comes into picture so yeah That's amazing. So, okay, from what I'm gathering, it's a one-stop shop for solo contributors, clans, or entire DAOs. Um, and also, what you're doing is basically creating a, a one-stop shop DAO operating system. So, would you say this is comparable to like a, a DAO workspace too? Um, yeah, pretty much. So, uh, basically, think of it this way. So, now if you're a DAO who is using, who's currently using multiple tools, let's say you're using Safe for your treasury management, using Discord for communication. let's say discourse for forums so with samudai uh, you can basically come on to samudai you can plug in all the tools that you're currently using and then we give you a workspace where all of your dao dao contributors can uh, come and log in in the morning and you know that's the one place they need to come to to manage all of their work streams so it's pretty much uh, you know fully customizable fully composable and what we do is we enable interoperability between these existing platforms so that as an admin you can identify a person who is actively contributing uh, to your projects yep uh we built out this platform which is a pretty much which is pretty much plug and play in nature so now think of it this way if let's say you're a dao when you're using multiple uh, tools for your daily operations let's say you're using safe for treasury management discourse for forums discord for your community and uh, let's say some other tools as well notion for some visibility stuff So now you can come on to some of that. You can plug in all the tools that you're currently using, and uh, we give you one place where all of your contributors, admins, community can come in and work together. So now you don't have to do a lot of context switching. Plus, what we do is we make these work together interoperably. So now uh, you, as an admin, are able to identify a person who's actively contributing in your projects, actively engaging in your forums, and also like uh, you know. writing a proposal and you know getting people to vote on them mm-hmm. so it's it's great for people who want to manage these work streams and uh, you know just brings a lot of communic- like coordination overhead uh, you know down to a bare minimum so that's uh, kind of what our approach was while designing the platform I I just feel like everything you said is so needed for DAOs the organization piece <laughs> is so essential for us I feel like with so many DAOs, we have all these pain points, scalability issues, organization issues, and really it it's kind of coordination, right? It's everyone coming together and working efficiently. And I think DAO tools like this are so yep. needed. Um and I would love to show our audience that's watching our uh, the video today um a little bit of screen sharing about what the tool looks like. So, yeah, I'd love to show what the tool looks like. Yeah. Um maybe after a couple questions we'll we'll dive into that and give a sneak peek. Yeah, anything else you want to share on on what Samadai is, how it functions and and what problems you're trying to solve? I think it's pretty much uh, what we covered earlier itself, uh, the visibility and participation itself for the internal DAO members then uh on a macro level just trying to up, uplift the entire space itself while uh, you know trying to bring more revenue streams for the existing DAOs, giving them more discoverability. And uh like one one of the thesis that we have right here on some of in some of that is that uh a lot of the 
opportunities that are going to be enabled in DAOs are not really happening because there is not a lot of DAO to DAO collaboration. And that's a piece that we want to solve for. So, uh, I mean, we've tried to add, uh, you know, a feature which tries to enable and like get it done in a low, low hanging manner. So, uh, and we're going to be le- releasing that in our beta. So uh, let's see how it goes. Awesome. Cool. Well, for my next question, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and show our viewers today on YouTube awesome. a little bit of the Samadai website. All right. So looking at your website, I, I was looking around yesterday, just prepping for this podcast. And it looks like you guys, first of all, really prioritize the user interface. Like it's just beautiful on your website. I just love scrolling down on it. It's so fun. Um, and aside from that, I was looking, you know, more into the rabbit hole on the Samadai website. And it looks like you guys really prioritize lifestyle, culture, values. I see the bufficorn here, life at Samadai. I love the Eat Denver vibes. Um, so yeah, if you want to talk a little bit about the values of Samadai and what life is like there day to day, um, love to educate our listeners today. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, at Samadai, uh, so there are two things or kind of three things that we value the most when it comes to, uh, you know, our internal workings and the way we approach product. So the first thing is like constant learning. So like all of the team members, they are always incentivized to do something uplifting or let's just skill up in any way possible. Now that could be reading more about the space, getting more involved in whatever they're doing or, uh, you know, just gaining some, uh, you know, soft skills or, you know, technical skills or whatever they want to do. But the only thing is that, uh, you know, you don't have to stay, you do not have to stay constant. So that's one thing that we prioritize like the most when it comes to this. Secondly, uh, we always, we always, uh, you know, have this mindset of either think big or don't think at all. So we're always trying to, you know, solve the most outlet, like major problems out there. We're always trying to disrupt what we're trying to do. And I think that's like the correct way to do go about it as well, because, uh, in a space that is as nascent as ours, uh, I think we all have the equal opportunity to do this and it's our responsibility to do it as well. And that. the third thing, as you must have noticed uh, from our website as well, and you'll also see from the product, is that we always uh, you know, are very design forward. So design is one thing that we do not want to compromise on because uh, as it is, the UX of the Web3 space is not <laughs> uh, optimal at the moment. But based on the website, it looks like you've really prioritized making it fun to use and making it like an attractive experience to the user. Yeah, exactly. And uh, like the best example to take over here is of the banking industry. I mean, like everyone uses banks, but like most of the people do not understand how banks work or how the money works. And that's the abstraction that we are aiming for when we like build a product. And I mean, yeah, you got it right. We basically enjoy building the product and I mean, yeah, it's sometimes, uh, you know, just keep on looking at the product and be like, man, this is good to be using. So something I want to comment on uh, just at the top here, and this isn't part of my questions, but just to educate our listeners today, looks like you're going live in seven days, 10 hours and 52 minutes and 39 seconds. <laughs> uh, so you want to talk about that yeah. a little bit? Um, yeah. So uh, basically what we've done is we... Uh, we basically launched a closed beta back in December and we got a few people to try out the product, got their feedback. And what we've done is we've revamped a few uh, features on the platform based on the feedback that we've gotten and try to make it even more usable. So now what we're doing is in the next seven days, we're going to be uh, like going out with this next cohort of private beta uh, where we're going to be asking the users to try out the product and, you know, get their feedback. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the get exclusive access link that you see over here right on the platform, that's how you get on the platform. So right here. if you guys are interested, just fill it up. Yeah. Awesome. You guys, if you're listening or watching, we are on their website and you can sign up for exclusive access. I think by the time this episode is released, this will actually be live. <laughs> so yeah, um, Kush, if you want to show a little bit about what this looks like from your side, if you want to show our viewers a tool, that'd be really awesome. Yeah, this is how uh, the some of the dashboard looks like once you onboard your entire community. So now, uh, when you look at it, this is basically the dashboard where you can manage all of your existing integrations. And this is a community-facing dashboard that you can set up and customize as per your needs. So you can just choose to add or remove what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep based on your requirements and uh, you know priorities. And yeah, basically what we've done is we've made this widget kind of system where you can add or enable the integration that you want to use. 
So now uh, you can integrate your calendars uh, from your Google Calendar and your Discord calendar. So your community has one place, one place to you know check on what's going on. Uh, then uh, basically we've made this uh, review system where people can comment about communities. So if let's say you're a new contributor, you can learn more about the culture of the community and what goes on in there right from the reviews. If let's say you're an admin, uh, you can just get an idea about what people are thinking about the community and how you can improve about it. Then uh, we we have this uh, snapshot integration where uh, you can fetch your existing proposals and start a forum around a particular proposal right here on the platform itself. So what happens is people can choose to opt into this particular discussion and just engage with it and get notified with it. So what happens is over time, you're basically accumulating a history and uh, basically a segregated history of how, what, what went down uh, with a proposal and what was the factor, why it passed, why it didn't, what, why it didn't pass. And you have this uh, whole arranged history of what went down with it. So this is like the forum piece of it and uh, that we built out. Then, yep, uh, we've got this recent activity thing where uh, as an admin or as a contributor, as in anyone, if let's say you have a bit of downtime, let's say you have an offline for eight hours, you can just come in and check over here on everything that has been going on in the community and uh, everything that, that, that people have been up to. So you don't have to like scroll through hundreds of messages just to catch up. You can just check over here. You can uh, also like have some public facing websites and blogs that you want to add. You can add a Twitter widget, which will just showcase the dashboard according to your users. Then we've got a project management board that will get to later. And uh, yeah, we oh, have a safe profiles integration too. to which contributor profiles as yeah, well. Yeah, there's profiles. That's cool. Yeah, we'll get to it. Uh, so uh, we have a safe integration where let's say you can integrate your multiple safes, uh, you know, manage and tra manage transactions, nudge multi six signers right here on the platform itself, and you know, just stay up to date with, date with all your payments. Then uh, this is a widget that we have built out uh, for. That we actually built out for investment DAOs, but I guess it can be used by anyone. So what it essentially is, is it's basically a customizable form. So think of it like a Google form, but, and you can fully customize it according to your questions, according to whatever you want to do, multi-choice, multi-select. And uh, you can basically just put it out on your platform, on your uh, profile over here on Samudai, or you can just share the link with anyone and they can fill out this form. And what it does is basically organizes all the responses on a Kanban on a Kanban board that we have on the platform. And uh, now you can manually assign people to a particular response. So now if let's say you're using this form for onboarding, you can like, you can handhold a particular contributor to get them onboard on the platform. If let's say it's a deal for, it's a deal flow pipeline uh, for an investment now, you can assign a particular investment to a particular person and they can look after it like from end to end. So that's uh, how we envisioned it and that's how uh, it is. Uh, coming out of projects, yeah, I mean, we've got a project management system. This is actually one of the things that we got feedback on. So we've actually tried to make it even more robust. So you can, like, you know, segregate them by the departments, by the contributors, see who's working on what, add subtasks to it, and, uh, you know, manage it in a much more deeper manner. And also, like, wow. uh, create, create a bounty for a particular uh, task right here from the platform itself, like just click the post as job button and just click over here, just add details, let's say uh, currency, ETH1, save task. Yeah, so now uh, this job has been posted on some of that job board. So it's that simple. And that's what we wanted to do. And yeah, then you can manage your team, just have a look at the different members, what are they working on, what are their roles, their activity. Love the buffer uh, corn. Payments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh got payments anything that is going on the pending transactions anything that you want to bring your attention to the forum we already covered it uh yeah and then we've got a discovery piece that we mentioned so now what we've done is we've actually created profiles for every particular DAO that is working on so now this is like the testing server uh the test environment so you must be seeing a lot of garbage value over here but uh how it works is basically every DAO gets a profile and they don't have to work to imp like updated because as they keep on working, we updated for them. So it shows recent jobs, uh, the reviews that they got in their past collaborations with other DAOs, the team that is working on them, bio, and you've got a way to collaborate with them right here on the platform itself. So that's something that we've built out. And similarly for contributors, you can find out, uh, find more like-minded contributors 
connect with them and chat with them on the platform itself. So now basically think of it this way that a few like-minded contributors come together, they form a clan right here on Samoda and they start working on something. Over time, they build up reputation, reputation and now they themselves start as a, uh, let's say, a service DAO because now they've basically leveraging their skills to provide services to other people. So that's, you know, how we envision this particular feature. Then, uh, yeah, we've got a bounty board and task board where you can manage everything. And what what don't you profile. guys have on? <laughs> it's it's so comprehensive. <laughs> there there's just so much. It really is like an all in one one stop shop. Yeah, exactly. And that is what we wanted to do. We wanted to make the lives easier for people. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you look at it, this is your contributor profile. So this is this has everything that you want to have. You can feature your projects, your connections over here, your active projects. Uh, you can have your connections. I mean, if you want to like work on something uh, like a freelance thing, you can add up, add your hourly rate over here and uh, have your overall rating. And we've also given the contributors a personal project management space. So now because everyone is like at least a part of three to four different DAOs. So this is the place where you get aggregated view of all the tasks that you're working on from all the different DAOs. So if you're a contributor, this is the one place that you need to come to to get an idea on what's you know pending and what's going to go on. And you can also manage a personal task like a to-do list or something over here. So it's completely up to you how you want to use the platform. And uh, yeah, basically this customizability is what we valued the most because uh, we realized that there were a lot of uh, you know different uh, solutions in the market, uh, but they were not able to fulfill a lot of needs that the DAOs had. So that's why we wanted to, you know, build some of that. And yeah, we've got a chatting feature as well. So you can create group chats and, uh, you know, chat with your team members and just get it done. Wow. So there, there's even a social element to it too. And in chats and connections, profiles, yep. this is really cool. It's almost yep. like a uh, mini like Web3 social media, task management and bounties, <laughs> like uh, just a little bit of everything, honestly. Just a workspace where you yeah. can connect with different friends and, and professionals working in the industry. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it's basically also like, if you think of it, it's basically a platform where you can manage everything that you're currently doing and also have more earning opportunities through the collaboration feature or the discovery feature. So it's kind of like the profile uh, makes itself even stronger as you keep on working on some of that because, uh, you know, it keeps on aggregating and accruing more value as let's say you create keep on creating more history and uh, yeah we're also we are currently working on more you know such features to make life even easier and bring more value to a few of the people so yeah well i i just have to say i'm i'm really impressed the user interface looks absolutely beautiful it's just intuitive and i feel like it just gives you a little bit of everything to help you and your DAO stay organized on an individual level and for the organization exactly. level as well yeah i love that yeah, exactly. And I mean, uh, I understand there'll be a lot of things that we need to work on, but yeah, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for more feedback on this. We're looking for, you know, more people to try it out and tell us what we did wrong, what we need to do better so that we can work on it and make it better. Absolutely. And for those who are listening today and not watching the video, uh, go to samadai.xyz. And on the top right of the screen, you'll see get exclusive access. Now, this might already be live by the time this is posted. So um, yeah, where would they go after the um, exclusive access period is over and it's live? Yeah, so basically what we're doing is we're basically onboarding people on cohorts right now. So let's say you go to samadai.xyz. You just fill out your email over here and, uh, you know, just click on get exclusive access. So what it does is basically we get a list of all the people who are interested in the platform. And, uh, yeah, based on that, we onboard people slowly and slowly, because as I mentioned for us, community experience and the user experience is the top most priority. So we want to make sure that if let's say we are onboarding even 50 people on the platform, they are treated like in a special manner. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, it looks like you've done so much work as a team uh, to just really prioritize the user experience and really kind of like user obsessed with how you've done the design, um, the intuitive nature of the app. So uh, this is really amazing. But I'm curious what challenges you faced for Samadai and as a team and, and how you've overcome them to come so far. We've been working on Samadai for almost a year now and like, uh, the journey hasn't been like uh, all, you know, 
flowers awesome. and gardens yeah. and whatnot. It never is. <laughs> so, yeah, but I mean, uh, I think one of the one of the biggest problems that we faced was hiring. So, uh, I mean, hiring, uh, it's actually one of the things that like I had no experience about because like I started, I, I started building some of that right out of college. So, uh, I did not have a lot of experience, uh, you know, taking interviews or hiring people. And it was just very difficult to find the culture fit when it came to hiring people because we actually, uh, I think, uh, we were always of the mindset that it's okay to wait rather than getting, you know, like a wrong person on the team. So that's why it took us a lot of time to build like a reliable team that we currently have. And also it's always a challenge to make uh, your company lucrative to people who are outside, uh, who are looking at you from the outside. Because, uh, I mean, just think of it this way. Like if you're a top talent, why would you prefer a startup and like not another startup who let's say has a whole history of, working for let's say two past years and have a good product out there they have good users out there so it's very difficult for anyone who's just starting out to make themselves lucrative to people so i think that is something that we really faced uh you know that was a very new problem to us and i think this is a problem that a lot of DAOs face as well because uh in the end even they have to provide some kind of value to retain the contributors to make the to make their DAO lucrative and like make it stand out uh, from other house as well so i think that is one of the like major problems that we faced and uh but yeah i guess being patient learning from our mistakes and uh you know setting up effective pipelines and uh getting a few calls wrong actually uh helped us so yeah and special thanks to our investors because uh they have been super supportive along the way and uh just helping us with the entire hiring thing as well Sorry. So I just wanted to say, like going through those challenges, I think it helped teach the team patience and actually finding, um, you know, proper talent acquisition strategies, right? You're going out, you're looking for the right people. Um, and I think that's really important when building a team, right? Like you have to find the people that you trust to work with and know can deliver. Um, and I think based on the culture I've seen and the passion that this team brings, like you guys are showing up to industry events and really passionate about this product for a long time. I think I saw you at both MCON and ETH Denver just out there, you know, continuing to show up. So I think um, taking that time and learning how to acquire the right people for the team was a really valuable skill that you've gotten. And also, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at in the news on um, on your website, Careers at Samadai. Samadai raises 2.5 million in pre-seed funding. So that's not part of my questions, but I'm just curious, like what that journey was like to try and, uh, you know, look for funding and, and achieve that goal. Yeah. So I guess uh, we started raising last year itself when we uh, were working. And I think at that time I had been working on some of that for like, uh, I guess, six months because, uh, yeah. And Honestly, like uh, ironically and like uh, coincidentally, like the fundraising journey began at uh, ETH Denver itself last year. So I've heard that, that was actually before. one of my <laughs> yeah. So uh, it began over there. I met a lot of people and I showed them what we were building, and they were like initially very, like they were very uh, excited about what we were trying to build, and I was in a shock that like really, wow. and that's how it kind of began and. <laughs> That's how, uh, you know, like in the first two days, I kind of got this feedback. And then from the, from the third day, we were like, okay, let's, let's try to raise money. And that's how it happened. Uh, also, like uh, my co-founder, Naveen, uh, he used to work at a VC firm before. So Lunar Ventures were also one of our uh, investors now. Nice. So through them, we got a lot of good feedback on how we can, uh, you know, structure our pitches and what the, what's the direction that we should take with the product. So... Uh, they have been really helpful uh, in the whole process and they also made a few good uh, introductions and that's how it basically went. So like uh, in the starting, you guys, you just find one person to talk to, they introduce you to other people, then these two people are introduced you to four other people. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, that's networking. Once, that's let's networking. Say, yeah. That, <laughs> and then let's say a month into this, uh, you have a calendar which is just full packed from the morning to the evening because you have all these pitches lined up. So uh, yeah, that's how it went. Well, it sounds like a lot of work to get here, but it's finally almost time one week until you're going live. So oh, yeah. that must be so <laughs> exciting. Wow. Um, I, I can just kind of feel the excitement from your side. Um, like this is something you put so much work to into and it's finally here. 
Now, I'm curious, um, I, I know we kind of covered this a little bit, but if you could put this in like really simple terms, what do you feel is the main value proposition of Samadai? You know, in, in the context of the combination of what the team has built and the community side. So I'm curious what you think about Samadai makes it really special. So I think uh, one of the main things that like we, uh, as I mentioned, we focus at Samadai is like the experience that we provide to the users. And that's one of the things that I, that I, I think stands out as well, because when, once you get to the Samudai, it's so easy to use. So it's definitely one of the major things that, you know, stands out. And apart from that, uh, the way we actually build the platform, we actually build the platform while working closely with DAOs. So we know what, you know, user flows will come up. We know what requirements would come up. And we've actually taken the time to simplify them and, you know, incorporate those into the uh, platform itself. So, for example, like the deal pipeline thing that we earlier saw, uh, the customizable form thing, that's actually uh, something that we came up uh, with while observing one of the DAOs that we're currently working with. And yeah, I think it's just a culmination of features like those, uh, which basically add up and build the entire experience, uh, you know, that just makes it stand out. And yeah, and apart, I mean, I guess uh, the way the platform is structured, so if you look at the dashboard, uh, it's like fully customizable. You can just turn on and turn off anything that you want to use and do not want to use. So I think having that customizability, that plug and play feel where let's say you're able to uh, try out Samudai without losing your progress on any other uh, existing you know, workflow management tool that you have, that's a superpower because now your cost to try out the product is initially zero. And uh, yeah, it's just a no loss for you to try out the product. So I think that's, uh, you know, a super, uh, that's a super power to have. Awesome. Yeah. It sounds like there's just a lot of energy put into the community and put into the user. <laughs> and I think that's a huge value yeah. proposition of Samadai. It's helping DAOs overcome like some of these pressing problems they're facing. Yeah. So in, in regards to the community, could you tell us a little bit more about the Samadai community, um, why they're so important to the Samadai ecosystem? And then we could talk a little bit about the future of Samadai as well. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, I mean, in terms of, just in terms of community, I mean, not just Samadai's community. So I feel in today's day and age where, let's say, uh, attention is so sparse, I think having a community behind you is such a superpower because now with all the chat GPT and other you know, AI tools coming up. So even code has not been, even the code is not a moat. So distribution is the superpower over here now. So I feel that when you have like an engaged community around you, it's just really, really uplifting for the people who are working on the product because now you basically have this own band of cheerleaders who's rooting for you to win. And then it's your responsibility as well to b make them a part of the journey and, uh, you know, incentivize with the incentivize them with the process and bring that ownership to them. So I think that's one of the things that <clears throat> you know uh, is really valuable for every community. And uh, unfortunately, we had to learn this the hard way. So initially, we were <laughs> initially we were not very uh, focused on the community aspect of it, uh, like right when we started out, like quite early. And that's how uh, that's I think something that, that we lagged on. Uh, but now we've realized it, and we're actively working on to to engage that and, you know, make that work. That's amazing. And hey, whenever you need help, I, I'm happy, you know, to feature you guys on podcasts like these. We're also doing weekly Twitter spaces on the Opolis account. So, you know, I have a huge oh, awesome. passion for, uh, for community building and showing up and educating on concepts. Like just yesterday, we did Web3 Wednesdays and we talked about dApps, DAO tooling, scaling um, organizations in oh, the Web3 nice. space. Kind of right up your alley. I kind of wish you were there, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it, it would have been really awesome. awesome to have you there. Um, one of our guest speakers, Mariah, and Humpty came on as well from Crypto Sapiens, but they just summed up oh. the importance of community in the Web3 ecosystem so beautifully. It's probably the, the best I've ever heard it summed up. And I'll, I'll share the recording with you, Kush, so you can check that out. Um, but yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Any, any chance to come up to build community, come to industry events, you know, um, I really think that's really important because the tech only takes us so far. The people and the teams determine the direction that we go and how we utilize this technology. So I love it. I, I love that the focus now is going into the human side of it, um, the community. Let's go, man. That's amazing. So, okay. 
Let's talk about the future. We're getting towards the end of the episode here, but I really want to talk about how you envision Samurai positively imp impacting the Web3 ecosystem and how you see this tool helping people. As I mentioned, so like uh, when we talk about DAOs at Samurai, I mean, first of all, uh, we don't know uh, what, what the DAO is going to look like tomorrow. I mean, it could be a DAO. It could be an iteration of what a DAO stands for. It could be... I mean, whatever word you want to call it, you want to call it. You want to call it decentralized teams or on-chain communities. So it's basically the way people organize themselves and uh, you know get work done. So it basically, at the heart of it, we are you know trying to get this kind of freedom to people to work the way they want to. And I can I think this is uh, actually something that. Uh, it resonates with a lot of uh, younger individuals out there as well. Because as I mentioned, this is a recurring theme that I've heard uh, while taking interviews. And uh, I mean, every time I take these interviews, I talk to them about DAOs. I try to tell them, I try to you know explain to them and try to get them to explore about it. So uh, yeah, I mean, think of it, think of, uh, think of a future where let's say you are able to contribute to whatever communities you want to contribute get compensated on your own terms. It's like a complete life change, you know? Yeah, and I mean, I think you're a prime example because right now you're doing like kick-ass work at Opolis <laughs> and now you've also like gotten into Crypto Sapiens and our organizing podcast, which is something that you want to do. So like, you're happy doing it. You're it's like self -sovereignty. learning what you want to learn. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's basically you're spending your time as you want to spend it. Exactly. So basically, we at Samudha want to make this future a reality for everyone out there who wants to, do, wants to work in this way. And yeah, I think that we'll be able to achieve it because otherwise, I mean, what else is there? Exactly. So, yeah. And it's really in the spirit of decentralization, right? Like in self-sovereignty, we talk about this a lot at Opolis. We talk about democratizing employment and empowering the independent worker. So you get to work from where you want, with whom you want, as much as you want. And we believe that is the democratization of employment. And DAOs are such a huge piece of that. Like I'm in so many discords and different DAO chats. Bankless DAO feels like my home, Crypto Sapiens, Opolis. And I kind of like fit all the pieces together for my work day, right? And try to feed them all into each other, right? Like on Crypto Sapiens, for example, we are actually partnered with Opolis. So if you look on our YouTube channel in the description, you'll see the referral link. So anybody that wants to learn more about joining Opolis, it helps Crypto Sapiens. It helps the whole ecosystem go further when we work together. You know, having guests like Samadai and, and Kush having you up today, it helps the DAO ecosystem progress by helping you come up, by educating our listeners. So uh, I'm a big proponent for symbiotic relationships, right? And networking. So I love when we can all just come together and create value and help the projects and, and the ecosystem at large go further. Yeah. I like, honestly speaking, I'm such a fan of what you guys are doing at Opel. Oh, because, thank you. Like, on because I mean, honestly, inclusivity is such an obvious problem with the space and it's not being talked about much. And I think you guys are the only ones who are working in that direction. So, I mean, huge respect to you guys for doing oh, that. I thank mean, you. Like, super work over there. <laughs> yeah. So a, a big reason I love Opolis, right? It's, it's just meant for anyone that wants to take ownership of their time and their work, right? And it's very inclusive. Exactly. And I, I show up for a lot of different communities, you know? Um, I've been leading our partnerships, right? And trying to help projects like to be more um, legitimate when it comes to employment, right? Getting things like the W-2s, pay stubs, um, access to medical benefits, insurance. What if you have a kid and you want to work in Web3, you know? Exactly. And you need family coverage. What if your kid gets sick? What if you you know, hurt yourself in an accident. Like having those benefits are so important. Having your basic human needs met, I believe we should offer that to people working in Web3. And also, you know, in the United States, this is something we're dealing with, but regulators coming in like Gary Gensler, the SEC coming down hard on the crypto industry. And if we're showing, we're taking the steps to be compliant with taxes and taking all the steps necessary to do things in a way that's compliant and legal, Opolis is a huge proponent of that, right? Helping individuals to have yep. all their compliance boxes checked. We're, we're really into being compliant with U.S. labor laws, with, you know, ensuring they're paying their federal and state taxes. So we help with all of that. So we can kind of show like, Hey, we're, we're compliant in this industry, you know? Um, so that's one of the reasons I love Opolis. It's helping to legitimize employment in the space, you know? And give freedom of work. So win win. <laughs> I mean, that's the major part of it. That's the major part of it. And I, I mean, it's 
super, super thanks to you guys. Awesome. So I know we are getting to the end of our episode here. So um, I really want to talk about, um, this is kind of a wild card question I like to ask at the end of the episode, but are there any industry events coming up that you're excited about or upcoming initiatives? Obviously your project is going live in about seven days. So that's something to be excited about. But if there's anything else you want to talk about, uh, feel free. Yeah. I mean, uh, the private beta is something that is <laughs> like, right on top of the right on top of my cards right now because i mean a lot of work has gone into it and uh it's gonna be it's gonna be fun but yeah apart from that i think metafest is coming up uh in august so uh you've been at mcon right i mm-hmm. think the meta yeah uh, we, we saw each uh, other at mcon too yeah yeah so basically uh, i think uh the meta cartel guys are getting it organized uh so it's basically gonna be like a bunch of guys coming together and uh, just start chatting all DAOs and having a fun retreat. Awesome. So I'm that so sounds happy. Good. I think it's going to be... <laughs> so happy they're yeah, doing it's, something. It's I was fun. sad to hear MCON um, isn't happening <laughs> again this year. So I'm glad there's something. Yeah, I mean, it's... I, I don't think it's exactly MCON, but uh, it's the way they label it. It's MetaFest. MetaFest. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, when is that happening? Uh, I think it's the end of August. End of uh, August. If I'm... Not wrong. Awesome. Yeah. And where is that happening? I think it's in Croatia. Croatia. Okay. Yeah. So this this summer is going to be pretty busy. I'm actually I'm going to Florida for the holiday week. We have Fourth of July over here in the United States. And then after that, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm trying to look into ETCC. I registered for the Taoist, so I'm trying to look into Paris for next month, but it's still on the fence. I went to so many conferences last year. I'm trying to slow down this year, um, but definitely <laughs> ETH Toronto. I will be at ETH Toronto as a speaker and a hackathon judge in August. So I'll definitely be there for anyone listening that wants to go. And Kush, hopefully I see Sam and I at one of these events as well. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the next event is that we're gonna go to because definitely not, definitely not ETC because we're gonna be busy with all the launch mm-hmm. stuff and everything. Uh, you might go to uh, MetaFest. I mean, I'm not sure, but yeah, let's see. I mean, we'll see each other around. So yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah. Is there anything else you want to share today? Any closing thoughts or anything you want to share with our listeners? Resources um, or anything before we drop off? Uh, I mean, I think we pretty much talked about a lot of things, but. Yeah, guys, I mean, if you guys have any questions, want to learn more about Samudai or any other thing, just want to chat, uh, feel free to uh, just text me on Twitter or, uh, yeah, Twitter is actually best. So, uh, yeah. Absolutely. And I will drop links to connect with Kush. I'll drop his Twitter and I'll drop the website for Samudai and the links in the description. And Kush, I'm just so grateful for you showing up, continuing to build community, continuing to educate on on shows like Crypto Sapiens. And we're so grateful that you showed up as a speaker today. So thank you so much. I hope to see you and the Samadai team around soon. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you so much for having us, Rachel. And uh, it was really fun chatting with you again. Awesome, man. I'm sure I'll see you soon. And I can't wait to use the Samadai tool, man. I, it just looks amazing so far. Definitely. I'm so excited. So excited for you and your team as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, friends. So before we end today's episode, I just want to take a moment to thank projects like Bankless DAO and projects like Opolis for making season eight of Crypto Sapiens possible. So I just want to draw your attention to the links in our description. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll see the links there. Or if you're listening to our podcast, you'll also see the links in the description. The first is going to be Bankless DAO community. And for those watching the video, I'll go ahead and share my screen. So you'll see here Bankless DAO's website. You'll also be able to learn more about how to join Bankless DAO, the different guilds, and different projects that we're working on at Bankless DAO. And there really is something for everyone here. I think it's an amazing starting point for those looking to get involved in Web3. If you're listening to this and want to learn more about how to get involved, Bankless DAO is an excellent starting point. There's guilds for just about any interest here, so I highly recommend going to bankless.community, joining the Discord, and saying hi and making some friends. To stay up to date on all things Crypto Sapiens, go to CryptoSapiens.xyz. Here, you'll see all of our podcast episodes uploaded with a brief description of what they are, and you can also download them from here. Now, last but not least, a lot of you know me actually from my work at Opolis. So Opolis, if you don't know, is a digital employment cooperative. We do things like offer employer services to those working in the Web3 space, working on DAOs, or running their own independent business. So we help issue W2s pay stubs, and get you things like national health care coverage. So if this is something you're interested in, click the link in the description. All proceeds for referrals go towards supporting Crypto Sapiens. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode of Crypto Sapiens. As always, stay tuned for next time, and thank you again for joining.